What's up everybody? Hey, I'm super excited. Today's gonna be an awesome day. I am, uh, I wanna thank you guys first of all for tuning in every single day. Uh, that really means a lot to me, but also I hope it means you're taking your education serious on how to really make it in MLMs, okay? This is a big deal. And today is a good, huge day because I'm gonna show you some little tricks you can use to double your income in your MLM, okay? This is a huge, or network marketing business, whatever. All right, if you missed any of the previous days, there's a navigation bar right above, and you can uh, go back and forth to any of the videos that you might have missed, okay? Um, but anyways, huge day, okay? I'm really excited. Today I wanna tell you the one and the only reason why somebody is ever gonna join your business, or, or the one and only reason someone's ever gonna buy anything from you ever, you know, even outside of MLMs. And number two, I wanna show you how to profit from leads who say no to you. Okay, this is good stuff. The only reason anybody will ever join you comes down to one word. And some of you guys, I think, guessed it in the comments yesterday. Value, okay, value. Value is the only reason why. Uh, people don't join the business, they join you. Okay, think about that. People join because of the, the value that you bring to the table outside of the opportunity. All right, you might wanna staple that again to your forehead, okay? People join because of the value that you bring to the table outside of the opportunity. They join you, they don't join the business, the opportunity. Um, anyways, do you guys see that works? I hope you guys are getting that. It's a huge, that's a huge point. Um, this is why you have to promote yourself and your knowledge and your expertise. And before, like I said, you can't do that unless you have it yourself, right? You can't promote what you don't know. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's why I keep pushing it, like learn marketing, learn how to send traffic, learn how to convert, um, and then go out and promote that stuff. The internet is huge, and I see people treating it like a billboard all the time, and that's, that's a huge issue, um, because the internet is not a billboard. All right, it's a place for you to go out and actually create relationships with people, right? And uh, it, people who treat it like a billboard, you know, they're the ones that hold up the signs and say, you know, hey, bye, 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 bye. And it, they're trying to recruit like a fool. I, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> it drives me nuts. That is not how you recruit. You might get lucky, but you're certainly not going to be a top earner, right? Um, a great marketer, Mike Dillard, said, you have to give without want before you can have, all right? In other words, you got to give. Um, you got to give people for your business before you can expect people to want to join you. All right, that, that's the role of marketing. That's it's value giving. It's relationship building. Um, this is another one you might you might want to write down. Um, I can't remember who this is by. It says you can build this business online or offline, but you cannot do it without building relationships. And forever that used to make me mad because I <laughs> people kept saying build relationships, build relationships, and I was like. You know, I don't know about that. I, I'm just gonna go do my thing and then make a lot of money. Okay, that's not how this works at all, okay? Um, anyways, now how do you build relationships? First, you deliver value. And I know I have crammed that point down so much the last three days, four days. Anyways, but I see people online, like I, like I was saying, saying, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give and, and they're doing a really poor job of building relationships. That's why no one goes to those things, right? Now, they're treating the internet like a billboard. Um, and here, here's just one more thing you guys want to write down also. This is not a business opportunity. It's like, what? <laughs> this is not a business opportunity. Like you've always been led to believe. This is a personal development industry disguised as a business opportunity. Okay, network marketing is personal development through the commodity of an MLM. Okay, does that make sense? You are selling personal development. This business is really all about developing yourself, being awesome, and then going out and developing other people. That's all this really is. And it's amazing, What's, it's so cool how much development I feel like I've gotten from this, this whole experience, right? Um, becoming, an, becoming a leader is, is something that you can choose to do. Nobody tells you, no one gives you that title, right? It's not an event. You choose to be a leader, right? So you choose, is all I'm really saying, okay? Give yourself the title as a leader. You can stand there and say, you know what, that, this is now my status, right? I am a leader and uh, I'm gonna lead and I'm gonna gain the skills I need to to teach others and to lead others. Um, and I truly believe 100% that anybody that makes a ton of money in this industry is a leader, right? So you, you gotta be one. So let me ask you, uh, do you think that you're a leader? Um, I hope you guys think you're leaders. Uh, or at least you have the ability to become a leader. Yeah, do you? I hope so. This is another nod with me. 
moment. I think I've had one every every video, <laughs> so not with me. <laughs> um, because I believe that we all can do whatever we want after enough, you know, sweat and grit, right? Um, so we're almost done. Right now we're in transition mode. We're almost done with the segment of learning how to design the mindset of a succeeder and a leader, which is what we've been doing the last three or four days. The next two days, the next two and a half, because this, this course will be over soon, is really where the nuts and bolts come out. Literally, all right? Very soon here, I'm just gonna pause the video and put my whiteboard up, and I'm literally gonna show you how to design this thing out in a very successful, succeeding, leader-driven uh, model, okay? It's awesome. Um, before I do that though, I, I actually want to share with you guys a story. And I'm not saying, okay, this story is not to be all, you know, mopey or whatever, okay? But I used to be really, un, you know, unconfident. How do you say that? Inconfident. <laughs> um, you could walk all over me. When I was in high school, which was a long time ago now, um, I was, I was 210 pounds. I was... 35% body fat, and I was only like 5'6", and I had a double chin. All right, I was working on my triple chin. I was a huge kid, okay? You can't tell now, obviously. I got a little gut still, but you can't tell now, but I, I got voted the nicest kid in high school out of my graduating class in high school. There were 600 of us, and it was not because uh, I was nice. It's because I was so unconfident. You could walk all over me, and um, so I started... I, I got pissed off, right? And when I get pissed off, that's usually when stuff starts to happen. And same thing with the MLM. After that, that first month, I got pissed off. And that's when stuff started happening. And I started changing who I am. And I started changing things for me. And uh, I got pissed off. And I started lifting every day. I lost 45 pounds. And I started looking in the mirror. And um, I would say... <laughs> you guys can't laugh, but you can if you want. But I'm serious about this. There's real power to it, okay? I did a lot of positive self-talk, and I was like, I'm Steven freaking Larson. I am the man, and I can do anything I want, you know? <laughs> and I would get real intense about it and, like, smack the table and stuff. My point is, if you want to be a leader, there's nothing more to it than deciding. Decide, okay? And, and it will happen. Go be a leader and people will follow you. I hope you guys all see that you are leaders. And, um, and this, is, this is a huge, this could be a huge transformation for you, okay? If you're in an MLM right now and you are failing, that's okay, all right? And if all I'm trying to, if, if you stay in yours and you become a leader, awesome, okay? If you want to join mine and become a leader, awesome. I've got a sweet marketing plan for you, all right? Um, anyways. Let's jump right into how to design the, the sales funnel now, okay? I've been talking a ton and I'm ready to get the good stuff, okay? It's all about automation and sales funnels and driving crazy traffic and making a lot of money, which is what we want, but we wanna do it the right way and we wanna build relationships, okay? And deliver value and I've pounded that to the ground, okay? <laughs> all right, let's jump to the whiteboard. All right, we are finally at the whiteboard. Oh my gosh, I've waited forever just to get to this point, all right? This is where I actually love it because I'm gonna show you all right, I'm tired of talking, all right? <laughs> so I'm gonna start showing you guys how to do this. Now, if you really wanna know how the game is played by top earners, you know, like Ray Higdon or uh, Susan uh, Slyer, um, all those top earners, they sell courses and tools and systems as a way to get leads, okay? Let that sink in. Think about anyone who's, who's a top earner in your industry, or, I'm sorry, in your uh, opportunity. They're all usually, they usually have a website or something out there or a second business or something that, that brings them in leads. They're selling tools, courses, systems, right? And, and they've got a webinar out there or something like that, right? That's how the top earners play it. They don't just sell their product or their opportunity alone, right? Um, let's take the, the triathlon example. Let's keep going with that. Um, so let's say I walk in and you can't sell me the new road bike that is six grand, right? Well, maybe you'll buy, you know, private lessons. Maybe you'll buy goggles, right? Um, and uh, that's basically, it's an accessory, right? I mean, you think about certain brands and you have multiple products of them. Let's think of golf, right? Uh, Titleist, they don't just sell golf clubs. They've got golf balls and little visors and t-shirts and you can get your own shoes, right? That's the whole reason why. Maybe you won't buy their, you know, $3,000 uh, golf club set, but maybe you'll buy some of their lower end stuff, right? This is exactly how you profit from people who are not gonna say yes to your opportunity, right? Um, forever ago, 
I keep saying high school examples. I don't know why. I should give other examples, but <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll save those for the webinar, I guess. I don't know. Um, but in high school, I almost got kicked out of high school because I wouldn't stop selling little knickknacks to all the other students, right? It became this huge disruption, and people would interrupt our classes asking me to, asking if they could uh, buy some, you know, like a laser pointer pen, or, hey, you didn't want that? Here's a duct tape wallet, or whatever, you know? I had my own little offer portfolio. Um, I also call this the value ladder. And, and this is very important for you guys to understand. Um, you don't need to just be selling the main products from, your, from your, um, your network marketing business, or you don't just need to be selling the opportunity. Um, I mean, let me ask you, do you own several products from the same brand or company? Most likely, you probably do, you know? Um, this is the value ladder in action, okay? The way the game is played by the top earners is with a value ladder, right? They, they've got, and let me just show you here, since we finally have a whiteboard, right? <laughs> I was excited to get to this point. So let me just show you here. Um, let's say here up at the top is the opportunity, right? I'll just put a dollar sign for that. So you want people to come join your opportunity. Hey, look, you can make money here. Well, you're not just gonna walk around and say to people, hey, come join my opportunity. Hey, come join my opportunity. That's how all the people who market just really, really bad do it, right? And so you're gonna say, you know what? here's the product instead, or here's a training system, right? There's all these other little steps up the way. You know, here's the marketing system, you know, here's a, here's a product, or if you're going for more people with the, with the actual opportunity itself, you could say, hey, look, I want to have actual, um, you know, I want to have a, um, here's a marketing course, right? I hate, I hate writing on camera, I'm terrible at it. <laughs> it looks awful, it looks like chicken scratch. Um, anyways, but that's the whole point of it, right? Is that you have a, a series of things at the bottom, so you could say, you know, here is, right here is, is value that you're giving someone, right, and, and there's more and more value as you move down the road, and then here is the actual price that you charge them, right? And so the, the price increases and the commitment from that person increases, right? So here you got some free report or uh, course, like this one, right? And, and it's, it's really the intro to a few other things before the actual opportunity comes along, right? And this, is, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm saying if you join my team, I give you a marketing system. We've nailed the value ladder with a series of steps that get a lot of people in, okay? So that's, I just keep handing that system off to those who join my, my team. That's exactly what I was talking about in those other, other videos, right? So anyways, let's jump right in the value ladder. Um, I made one for you here, so it looks a little bit better than this, okay? So check out your screen right now. Um, in the upcoming webinar, I'll show, um, I'll show more of how you can use uh, basically any of the content I've made and keep the money from the sales and such. Anyways, cool stuff. So here's the value ladder with something called a free line. And guys, I could spend two hours alone on this one concept, okay? Uh, this is how, you know, when I got hired by Paul Mitchell out of, high, or out of uh, college, when I, when I was told I could leave that internet marketing class, Paul Mitchell is the one that hired me. And I went and um, some of the owners had me driving traffic for them and doing all this stuff. All right, it was all from the value ladder and things like that. So anyways, so here it is. On the side is the amount you charge. On the right is, is the perceived value, right? And the very first thing on the bottom there, is a squeeze page to a free report or, or video or whatever it is, right? Then there you have a, a coupon with a deal uh, that comes through an email for one of your intro products, right? Then there's a webinar with a demo of a product, that, right? It's free with a sales pitch. Then moving on up, there's a, hey, guess what? There's an email uh, that shows you another video. It's a freemium model. Does that make sense? You just keep adding value and, and increasing the price. And that's all it really is, okay? Um, I'll show you some more examples of this stuff later, but at the very top is usually like the done for you stuff. Like, hey, you don't even worry about it. I've actually done it all for you, right? And these guys are awesome. Um, anyways, at the top is usually the thing that you're trying to sell. That's, just, that's just the thing that you want people to buy. And then all that other stuff below coming up is how you've gained the relationship strong enough so that they will take that top thing, right? The opportunity or whatever. Does that make sense? So look at the second one. This is usually what people do though. They, they skip the whole value ladder thing. They just put the bottom one in and they say, yeah, check out, uh, come check out my, my suite. You know, I'm at the gym right now and I'm taking my shake and this is incredible. I'm making a ton of money. I'm working in the gym right now and, and you should come join this opportunity. And that's all they say. There's no other value given, there's nothing. And I want to be very clear that that is not a lead, all right? 
a squeeze page to a free report, that's not a lead. That's just somebody who wanted a free report, right? You gotta do more stuff with that person to consider them as a lead. I had this phone call the other day, it just drove me nuts. All right, I'm gonna go on a rant for just two seconds here. <laughs> drove me nuts. These guys have been calling, for, calling me for like a year, almost a year and a half. I was finding a, a marketing list and um, I was just Googling it. And I don't know why, it was late. I think I put my information into one of these things. And these guys called me like almost immediately and I didn't answer. I was like, uh, why did I do that? I know better, like <laughs> don't buy marketing lists. And, uh, and these guys called me and then they called me the next day and then they called me the next week and then they called me the next month and they've called me every few weeks for the last year till finally I, I answered, I think this is like two weeks ago, I answered and I told the lady, why do you think I'm a lead? I filled that thing out a year ago. I was like, D I am not a lead. You gotta strike when the iron's hot. Holy crap, I don't want your thing. All right, that was a year ago and you're still calling me about it. Anyways, a lead is not someone who opts in, right? That's someone who just wanted your free thing. And so you gotta do more with them. That's what the next step of the value ladder is designed for. It's to, it's to go, okay, what more value can I bring? And if they go for that, then you know, wait, these guys might actually be real. You know what I mean? You need at least three steps in the value ladder. You know, your, your very top thing, kind of an intro product and a kind of middle ground product or service, right? Um, anyways, I'm, I'm spilling too much because that, that is a huge concept. Um, and there was a, so just real quick, there's an MLM who hired me to come do this for them. Um, it wasn't the owners of the MLM, it was some people who were inside of the opportunity and they had heard about what I was doing. And so I went over there and they hired me and, um, and it went great. And I kept telling them, I kept telling them how important it was to, um, they didn't understand like the lifeline of their lead. They didn't understand uh, that a squeeze page only has one entrance and exit. You know, the whole purpose is to get contacts from it. And I'm gonna show you guys more how to do this stuff. This is really what I'm talking about when I'm saying I'm gonna show you how to do that. All the other stuff was kind of a base for what I do. And you need to understand that. Um, Anyways, they didn't totally get it and, and they lost a ton of money. I kept telling them like, guys, look, this is not a squeeze page. It's a crappy website. Let me do this and do this. And they're like, no, no, it needs to have a second exit. Let's put our products on that page and let's do this. And I was like, that's not, you, you get, stick to the value ladder, okay? <laughs> squeeze page, number one, always, never skip it. Always squeeze page because most people are not gonna purchase, but if you capture their email address, you can talk to them again later. You don't have to re, you know, uh, acquire that lead or that email. Anyways, I'm getting animated here. <laughs> I get passionate about this stuff, okay? Um, all right, look on your screen right now, and this is what I mean by lifeline of the lead. This is what that MLM didn't understand. I probably should have showed this first. All right, the difference between a six, seven, and eight figure business. There was a cool study that was done that showed that the difference between the three and even a, a, a one figure, two figure, three figure, four figure, uh, also five figure, <laughs> the difference between any of these businesses is that these businesses that make a lot of money, they understand the value ladder. They understand the lifeline of their lead. That's what the answer came back as, is the people who understood that are the ones who make a lot of money. All right, it wasn't, it wasn't the product, it wasn't the service, the customer service, it wasn't which company had a better uh, marketing plan, right? It was who understood the lifeline of their lead better, which essentially is marketing, right? Um, and, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the value ladder once you fill it out for your business um, and you're going to say, hey, let's, let's figure out how people are gonna move through each one of these products. And this is, this is the same example as before, right? So we've got um, on the value ladder, so squeeze page and then a coupon deal and then a webinar, right? So then we look over here, there's a squeeze page. Um, and if you say yes to that, then there's a coupon that comes in and then after some email content across the top, then a webinar registration page comes through, right? Does that sound familiar? That's exactly what I'm doing here, right? And I want you guys to walk through my entire funnel so you can see how you should set your own up. Um, or I'll just give you my funnel if you join my team. Um, anyways, so they gotta understand the, the, the lifeline of the lead. Um, I'm always gonna try and give you guys some kind of free product or free download from here on out. Um, or at least over the next two or three days anyways. And for this one, I've created a, a, a template for a value ladder for the lifeline of the lead. Um, looking back at that, I should keep, I need to keep telling you guys a little bit more about this. There's something called a free line on there. You see that up and down, vertical, uh, it's orange. The free line is important 
what ends up happening is people will come out and they'll say, yeah, I want that free thing, but is that a buyer? <laughs> You've qualified a subscriber because they grabbed this stuff from you, but the next step is to qualify the buyer. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, well, pay for something tiny, you know? Pay shipping on something or, uh, or, or go out and, uh, you know, here's a really small product under $10. And uh, people who purchase that, they've just qualified themselves as buyers. And why is that important? Why is that important? You ask yourself, if, someone, if I know that somebody is willing to pull their credit card out online for a small product, I know they're probably willing to pull their credit card out for other things as well. A buyer is a buyer is a buyer, right? And there's hyperactive buyers too, people that like to spend a lot of money, um, especially when they're in pain, right? A lot of you guys watching this right now, you're in pain. You're failing in your MLM. <laughs> you don't want to admit it, or maybe you're just spinning wheels. You don't really know what to do next, all right? This is what, this whole thing is gonna teach you how to do that, okay? So I actually, I need you guys to fill out the value ladder for your own business, all right? Um, you need to create, and it could be for your MLM, it could be for your current business now, if it isn't one, that's totally fine. But you need to figure out, and let me show you this here real quick also. Okay, you need to figure out, so if you have your main product here, um, let's say you're a chiropractor. You know, I want you guys to know this works for offline business as well, okay, and, and especially online. Um, let's say you have your main product here, and let's say you're a chiropractor, and your main bread and butter for chiropractors is what, adjustments, right? They, they do back adjustments. All right, so they do back adjustments, and that's usually it. That's their main bread and butter, right? Um, and you think, huh, these guys, these guys make like 50 bucks, right, on a back adjustment, and then they'll never make any other money besides that, there's nothing else. Um, there's a funny story I heard, uh, this wrestling team, they were wrestling, and uh, every, every time they had practice, a, a um, chiropractor would come in and adjust them. Well, one time the chiropractor couldn't come, and Everyone was in pain. They're like, gosh, I gotta get adjusted. They've been tossing each other around the mat, you know. And this guy on the team looked up a YouTube video and after five minutes figured out how to do it and he adjusted everybody's back. And so they called the chiropractor and they're like, kind of making fun of him. You know, like, hey man, you went to school for six years and we figured out what you do in five minutes, you know. And I'm not ever suggesting you should do that, okay. <laughs> but uh, the guy got all defensive and he's like, no, no, we learn how to do this and cure this and cure this and do this and this and this. And they asked him, like, well, why the heck aren't you doing that then, right? So what the guy decided to do was to pull people from one, he needed to create a bait, right? And his bait was massages, right? He went to all these other masseuses, and every time they had a massage, the masseuse would say, you know what, if you want, if it was true, you know, it looks like you have a rib that's out of place or something, do you want the chiropractor to come in and just put it in place for you real quick? So that's exactly what he did. Chiropractor would come in and give the adjustment, got his normal 50 bucks, and then he told them, you know, the people who actually it qualified for, he said, you know what, and these aren't, don't laugh at these numbers or anything, all right, this is true. Your, your high-end stuff is usually, you know, two to 25 grand. Uh, two, so his was about $5,000, and it was for this health product that cured, I can't even remember what it was. Um, This health product, right? Well, how many people do you think got massages who were pitched them? You know, we could say maybe 10%, right? How many people do you think had the adjustments? Maybe, of all the people that came through, maybe 2%, right? And then how many people do you think actually got this health product? Maybe half a percent, you know, of the people? Well, it doesn't take that many people to buy that to really increase your income. And this is exactly what I want you to do with an MLM, right? Your MLM, the product, the opportunity at the top is what you want people to join, but you need more value to pull people through. That you leverage all the people who, who didn't say yes to your opportunity in the first place. This, this should be blowing up inside your head right now, okay? Drop my marker. <laughs> um, and think about your business and think about all this, like, let's think about McDonald's real quick. When you go through the, the McDonald's drive-thru, um, they have spent $1.91 to get you into the drive-thru. $1.91, holy crap. If they sell you a $2 hamburger and they made like nine cents, right? <laughs> I think those are the real numbers. Um, and, and that's hardly any money. Well, where do they make money? It's in their up sales, right? It's in their other products. 
and uh, they, when they sell you fries and a drink, then they're making money, they're making profit. Now they can actually, now they can actually operate as a business. And that's exactly what you need to understand is when you do things online or as, an, as a brick and mortar business, whatever it is, whoever can, whoever can spend the most money to acquire the customer always wins. And this is how you do it. Create a value ladder where it, you know, it's a percentage game at that point. And then all you do is just send numbers through. And, and, and a certain amount of people will buy this, certain amount of people buy this, fewer buy this, but when they do, you just doubled your profit, you know? Um, and, and you can pay for more ad costs and you can do better things for your customers because you have more revenue coming through. I can crush someone online with the, if I can pay $50 to get one person versus the guy that can only pay three bucks to get a person, you know what I mean? Um, the guy with the more ad, the guy who can spend more to acquire a customer always wins in business. Um, so anyways, I'm talking too much right now. Um, what I want you to do, your assignment is to submit your value ladder and your lifeline of a lead to, uh, to me. Um, it's me at stevenlarson.biz <coughs> or, and, uh, or go to my Facebook fan page as well. And you get a free consultation of it. I'll look at your value ladder. I'll tell you what's awesome, what isn't. The first three people who submit their value ladder to me, I'll do it for free. I usually charge like uh, two or 300 bucks to do it. I keep dropping my marker. <laughs> um, anyways, we're gonna be using your value ladder and the lifeline of your lead. Um, those two models, um, which there's templates right below here. Click on, the, click on the link right here below here and you'll actually uh, download them. Um, but we're gonna be using them for a ton of stuff, all right? And it's all gonna be to automate, okay? This is where we're starting to design the automation because now you know the processes and the systems that need to go in between. Anyway, so go make one. Um, so what's coming up next? There's a webinar, super sweet. Um, I'll, I'll send out a, a link to you guys as soon as it, for a registration page when it comes out. Um, guys, I think I have one more video for you. Um, and you're gonna learn how to design the actual sales funnel itself. It's really sweet, okay? Uh, and it's in a way that will pre-qualify your leads so that you, so you know the person you talk to is already interested, which is gold, right? So coming up next is gonna be how to gain uh, quality through your offer. It's using, using the, the offer series, your offer portfolio to qualify somebody. All right, cool stuff. Anyways, please uh, give me comments below. This was a longer video for sure, and I'm so sorry about that. Um, but uh, tons of stuff, okay? This is a lot of training. I'm just cramming into your head. I'm starting to brain dump, okay? Especially now. Um, so anyways, please let me know if you liked it, if you didn't, if you have comments. I would love to hear what you guys need more help on, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll send it out an email later, okay? Anyways, thanks guys, and I will talk to you later.